Okay, so we have collected our data in Power BI, and now we want to start to analyze it. One of the first things we'll want to do is see, well, how clean is our data? What kind of distributions do we have on various fields? And just some basic statistical analysis. All right, so let's go back to our Word file that we have been developing. And we have our initial data definitions, the fields and their definitions. And now we're building our table that has a list of uh, descriptions about our data fields and what we find out as we analyze the data further. So we may want to add a few more columns to this table. So let's go ahead and put it on a new page and give us give ourselves a little bit more space to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, layout page here. I want to add a break. And instead of just a regular page break, I'm going to add a section break that starts the next section on a new page. So now I have two separate pages. And I can, uh, while I'm on this page with the table, just tell it I want this to be a landscape page instead of a portrait page. And now I've got one document where I can uh, have a portrait page for the body text that I want to put together, but have this landscape page for the table that I want to create. And at this point, I can start going to my table tools here and add more columns over to the right. So I can just click on insert right a few times, give myself some more columns to work with. So what do I want to put in these columns? Well, I've got variable name, the data type, and then the uh, variable type that we're using in our analysis, whether it's a feature or a target. So I may just want to know, well, what's my count? How many values do I have here? How many missing data values are there in this particular uh, variable? And what's the percent missing? How many unique values do I have? So in other words, um, you know, I may have a number of uh, people that are age 18, a number of people that are age 19. So how many different actual values do I have? And then I may want to look and see how that distribution works. So what's the minimum value in the data set? What's my median value? And what's my max value? And also in between there, I may want to determine well, what are my quartiles. So basically uh, what that is, is that's a, an interquartile measure that splits your data up into four evenly sized populations and just determines, well, at what value is a quarter of the uh, values less than this number and three quarters are more than this number and so on and so forth. So that's a good number of measures to work with and see how we can start uh, evaluating the data. So let's go to Power BI where you have your insurance file open from earlier. And let's see what we can do. Now, the first caveat I will mention is that these types of tools, data visualization tools, are not really your best option for coming up with statistical analyses of, uh, of data fields and data sets, but we can kind of muddle through some of them uh, inside the tool itself. So let's say I wanted to create a column chart with age, okay? So I bring age into my column chart, and I can see right now I have the sum of age. Nobody's 50,000 years old uh, in our population. So what I need to do is I can uh, turn uh, sum off. But what I'm more interested in is my count. Remember, we're trying to develop our evaluation of the data. So how many actual items do I have in my data set here, and if I hover over here, you can see it's 1338. 
I have 1,338 items. Now, the next thing I might want to do is say, well, do I have any missing values in this? So there could be a possibility that I don't have age filled in for some of these. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. And the best way to do that in uh, Power BI would be just to go ahead and create a new column. So I'm going to create a new column. And we can see this column, I'll call it age missing. So I want to figure out how many of my age fields do not have a value. To do that, I'm going to use an if function. So if, and then I want to, uh, in my data set, so remember when we downloaded our insurance file, we added our name, so I could just start typing in my name. And there are all the, file, the fields in that file, so I'll just click age and hit tab. So if that age equals, and at this point I can determine how to find out whether this uh, variable doesn't have a value. And a function we can use here is blank. So blank. So if it is blank, and I can just leave the parentheses as is, then I'll change it to a one. Otherwise, I'll leave it as a zero. So if the age field does have a value, I don't want to count it. And at that point, I'm done. So now I could just go to age missing and um, bring that in and you can see nothing shows up. As a matter of fact, we do not have any missing values. And I could actually go to my data view here and scan my data and see, sure enough, I have nothing missing in my age. I can actually hit my drop down list here to filter and see the different values in here. And yeah, I only have zero. So I don't have any missing ages. As a matter, and as a matter of fact, this is a pretty clean data set. So all of the fields are like this. So I can now just copy this. All the way down. And I'm good to go. Now, what if I wanted to go back and check and see how many unique ages I have? All right, so at this point, I'm going to put age back in to my visualization here. And again, you can see it starts out with some, but I can say, okay, what is my count distinct? So count distinct is a, a SQL query option that allows you to say, well, how many unique values do I have in this particular data set? So if I want to count distinct by age, I'll go ahead and change that to count distinct. And once the visualization updates, I can see I have 47 different ages in my data set. And I could continue through that and say, well, what's my minimum age? What's my maximum age? What's my average age, median, variance, and so forth? Now, as you can tell, that's going to be a little bit of a tedious process just walking through these one by one. So we'll hold off on that for now and see if we can do that in Excel instead. So let's switch out of Power BI and open up our data set in Excel instead. And you can pause the video while you do that. So I now have age, all my uh, various data fields here. I'm going to first turn this into a table. And just like I did before, instead of just leaving it at the default name, for my table, I'll change the table to you know something meaningful. So I'll just call this Mitch Wenger Insurance again. So one of the first things we want to do is uh, 
see what our interquartile cutoffs are going to be. So I'll uh, just type in enter Q. So I can start off by determining what the count in a particular column is. And you can see when I type that in, it says, okay, what is the count of age there? So it converted that into a table reference rather than cells A2 through uh, A1339, for example. Now all I have to do is divide that by four, and that's my interquartile count, 334 and a half. I'll round that up to 335. So now I want to develop my statistical analysis for each of my numeric variables, I could go straight to my data analysis toolkit. And when I do that, I've got an option here that says descriptive statistics. And that's what I'm going to bring in for each of my numeric fields. So I'll click OK. My input range here will be and I can now just click on the column name at this point, age, and I'll say labels in first row. I'm going to set my output range to right here on my worksheet. So in this case, it's I5. And I want the summary statistics. And I can say the K largest and the K smallest. Now here's where that interquartile count comes in handy. So the K largest and K smallest, I've already calculated that interquartile and that's exactly why I did it. Did it. So I'll say 335 and 335 as well here. And I've said I want this in I5. So in I5, I will see my descriptive statistics pop up for age. And I can uh, adjust my column widths to fit everything. And here I've got my mean, standard error, error, median, and mode, deviation. I've got a measure of the kurtosis of my field, the skewness of my field. And then I also have a range, uh, minimum, maximum, uh, and then I also have my interquartiles here, 27 and 51, as well as a sum and a count. So the only thing I didn't really get here was my missing. So that's something I had to uh, go and figure out. We figured out a way to do that in Power BI with our calculated field. Okay. And so now I can just repeat this process and I'll do it again this time for BMI. So I'll go ahead and do the input range BMI. I have to change my output range to somewhere else. Otherwise, it's going to put it right over the age statistics I just calculated. All right, so BMI comes up. I can also do it for children. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. That'll be column D. And we'll put that right over here next to age. And like we did before, we can adjust our column widths to make sure everything fits. And then finally, we can do charges. So fairly quickly, we have ourselves a good set of univariate measures that we can use, including those ranges and everything we wanted to do. So we could then fill those in in our 
table here. And you can go ahead and do that and pause the video while you do that. Or you can uh, just uh, copy them down when I'm done. All right, so we filled in our table. Now, one thing to consider is categorical variables. Um, obviously, sex and smoker, we know we only have two unique values in this case for our bi biological sex and whether or not someone is a smoker. But as for region, well, we can um, use um, Power BI to help us out there. So let's bring region into our chart here. And because region is a categorical field, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in a bar chart the way it is. But if I were to change this into a table, I could see now I have my four distinct values of region. And just in case, if I have a uh, categorical variable with lots of different values, I could just do a count distinct for my value there. And now I see I have four regions. So I can use that to populate my table here. All right. So that gives you a feel for using Power BI and Excel, the combination of tools you have available to do some of these uh, univariate statistics. And we'll continue on with the next section.